Welcome to Local Doctors on Call. I'm Grant Boxleitner. Today's topic is massage therapy and integrated treatments with oriental medicine. Our guests today are Dr. Stephen Wrench and Kevin Pierce. Welcome, gentlemen. Kevin Pierce, Dr. Stephen Wrench. Uh, I'd like to start by having you guys both talk about a little bit of your background. We'll, we'll start with you. Oh, sure. Well, thank you, Grant. Uh, well, my background is primarily in allied healthcare. Mm -hmm. I started my career actually as a massage therapist here in Sarasota. All right. So, um, more years ago than I care to admit, but basically, <laughs> when I started working with clients and patients, I, I learned to really appreciate some of the things that we go through on a day to day basis sure. with stress and pain relief. And so, um, that's where I started my career, and then I got into actually teaching massage and anatomy and physiology and other types of uh, modalities. And uh, that journey has led me uh, basically up to the north part of the country. I lived in Wisconsin for a few okay. years, and actually have just recently returned to the Sarasota area. So uh, I have actually been. And we're teaching. glad to have you back. Thank you. And I've been teaching and doing uh, education administration for a number of years now. So that's what brings me to East West College of Natural Medicine as the academic dean, uh, hopefully. To return uh, full circle to uh, my roots of allied health care and teaching all together. Absolutely, and, and best of luck in that effort. We're going to talk a lot more here in a second, but Dr. Wrench, what about you? Well, I had a kind of a lifelong fascination with oriental medicine, and um, in 1970, I was a much younger man, and I was in <laughs> uh, an area in uh, Southeast Asia, Vietnam. I was in a little village called Cholan, just okay. northeast of what used to be called Saigon and my unit ran patrols and security in the area. And uh, as we entered one of the villages, I saw acupuncture for the first time in my life mm -hmm. taking place by Chinese missionaries who were treating uh, locals for the effects of malaria. And it was just fascinating. So while we had a few minutes break, I just asked through an interpreter some questions. I go, what exactly are they doing and what is this? Yeah. And uh, they explained to me it was acupuncture. And so whenever I would get back through that area, I always would look to see if it was still going on. And I only saw it one more time, but it was just like a seed got planted and it was something I had to pursue years later. And you kept that passion for it uh, all these years. I guess I did. <laughs> Outstanding. All right, gentlemen. Well, uh, Dr. Wrench, let's start with you. How does the body indicate dysfunction or injury? And, and you can certainly chime in too as well, Kevin. Grant, that's a great question. Really, uh, there's only five ways that we communicate with our body. And then I'll give you the three ways that it communicates back to sure. us. Sure. One of the ways we communicate with our body is uh, obviously by whatever we put in it. Mm -hmm. And the second. Yeah, the nutrition. We yeah, keep and, how important and there's that is. something that uh, our. Uh, uh, Dr. Pant always says at our college, he says, uh, we say, well, you are what you eat, and he always reminds us, you are what you eat eats, but that's another topic <laughs> for another time. Yeah. The second way that we communicate with the body is by what we expose the exterior to. Okay. And let's say, hypothetically, I, I live next door to the nuclear power plant, and then I moonlight in a chemical company, and on the weekends, I'm a crop sprayer. You see so what I mean? So you're being exposed so to I'm, all Yeah, this. this is being absorbed right in, into the skin. Uh, or I'm taking in too much sunlight mm -hmm. or without sunscreen and so on. So what's happening yeah. to my exterior, which ultimately will affect the interior. The third way that we communicate with our body is by what, what we do with it. Okay. Do we sit on the couch eating chips? Do we do yoga? Do we exercise? Do martial arts? Do we run? Do we do CrossFit? What is it that we're doing with our mechanism? Right. Uh, the fourth way is by how we breathe. And that's, again, another subject for another time. But when people say, uh, and they do often, they go, Really? I go, yeah, try stopping for a while and see what your body Holding says to your you. Breath. Exactly. So the other way that we communicate and the final way with our bodies is by our thought processes. Okay. What do we think about? And as we know in oriental medicine and, and, and just life, that as we hold on to certain emotions for a long period of time, that that begins to affect us now in a way of stress and, and again, another subject for another time. So we're time. trying to clear that out. Exactly. Uh, now, how does your body communicate back with you? Okay. Only three ways. And it's by form, that is changes in our body, particularly our exterior. Say I get a rash, say I get bloodshot eyes, say I have a deformity like, like rheumatoid arthritis or something, mm -hmm. or I get a little antalgic lean as I walk. Yeah. The second way is by function. Well, I used to be able to go up the stairs, but now my knees won't allow it. Or I used to be able to do this, but I can't bend over and tie my shoes anymore. So my, my function, functionality is changing. And the third way is by how I'm feeling. Okay. You know, I feel hot, I feel this way, I'm not hungry, I can't sleep, and so on. That's the only way your body can kind of say, hello, wake up. Yeah, right? giving you signals, perhaps. Exactly. Okay, and so basically then how does oriental medicine and massage therapy determine some of these conditions or causes? Or how can it help? Well, it can help in a number of ways. First of all, we, we treat 
in oriental medicine, we try to treat uh, the root, uh, you know, we call it root and branch theory. Right. Instead of masking symptoms, which, you know, is, is one way, mm -hmm. but if we look at a symptom, let's say you have a rash and we give you a cream, we go, that should... That should do it. Yeah, but that doesn't get us to the root cause. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things we do is we go, what is causing this? Because we view the right. body as an integrated whole. Okay, uh, and what about the massage therapy aspect of this? Yeah, it's a very similar approach in that when you're looking at an individual, you have to consider multiple factors, sure. not just what's presented. Uh -huh. So typically we take a very similar approach in understanding a root cause or what factors could possibly have led to this rather than just looking at the result. Right. Whereas massage therapists don't diagnose, mm -hmm. we are able to evaluate dysfunction and levels of discomfort or levels of behavior that may be causing day-to-day -day patterns that can be repetitive in nature, seeming like right. can cause more problems like a carpal tunnel syndrome or tendonitis or things like this that are soft tissue in nature. And we can then address those specifically and determine what patterns somebody's been doing over and over again right. to sort of beat themselves up. We, we do that on a daily basis and it'll help. And, and the if you have a client or something, would, is there a chance that they would do um, both the acupuncture and the massage therapy depending on need, or is it one or the other? Or? It would be recommended based upon the individual client. Okay. Obviously, if the individual wants to do both treatments, I believe there'd be great benefit in combining and integrating right. both types of therapies, absolutely. All right, and so explain how massage therapy is applied to the client and some of the benefits of these uh, massage modalities. Certainly. Most of the massage modalities you're going to see in especially in the state of Florida where there's a license and a regulation, mm -hmm. is going to be a hands-on modality that's designed to be within a certain comfort level of the, of the client. So what you're seeing is hands-on therapy such as a Swedish massage, which okay. is relaxation-based, helps to stretch the muscles and increase circulation. You're also going to see different types of applications that involve like your elbows or uh -huh. thumbs, particular direct pressure. Uh, there may even be involved things like hydrotherapy, hot packs, things sure. like that. So it all depends upon the need of the client, but the benefits would then be I hear be a lot about specific. deep tissue massage. Is that something that uh, you employ? Absolutely. A deep tissue is really kind of a general term that can be applied to a couple different types of massage okay. modalities. Deep tissue gives the impression that you're pressing really hard, but right. the reality is, is it's simply going deeper than the superficial tissue. Okay. You're reaching down into an area of the body that may be manipulating um, more of the subcutaneous area, getting into some joint areas so that you're actually helping to relieve pain or discomfort that may be more than just on the surface. And, and what's kind of the client feedback uh, when, when they get a massage? Obviously, it's usually like, wow, I feel much better now. Mm -hmm. Usually what the client goes through is a series of stages. When they come in, if they have a chronic condition, mm -hmm. it's going to take a little time for the body to undo what may have been done. It could sure. have taken years for somebody to actually establish a chronic tension problem or what we know is a trigger point. Yeah. You're not going to be able to resolve that in a single treatment or a single press most of the time simply because it's taken a long time and the body has to adapt. What we're trying to do in massage therapy, particularly in trigger point or deep right. tissue, is to address the specific muscle. So we'll treat a particular muscle and then we have to remember that the muscle is one of many and they're all connected. And so we'll work with the client to help to relieve the particular pain, but also address a general area and then a system-wide approach to help direct pressure in a comfort level where the client should say, ah, oh, that feels better. Might be a little sore, because remember, they've taken years to get there, but and, it should feel better. And you mentioned carpal tunnel. And th are there certain parts of the body, like the back seems to be a place that's uh, often sore or has symptoms? Uh, mm -hmm. Do you find that that's a, an area that you're treating uh, more than perhaps others? Yes. Most of the time, people are going to come with a major complaint area. And nine times out of ten, when people have back pain, mm -hmm. they want you to work on their back. And typically, because of the size and the involvement of the back sure. muscles, an application of massage to the back is going to give a very broad and general feeling of, wow, that's a, that's a really good feeling because we're treating a broad area. So right. you're getting a nice big muscle group that allows you to stretch it and relieve it and you can stand up straight for the yeah. first time in days. You feel good. Sure. We also want to make sure that people are aware that most therapists they also want to approach maybe the opposite side to release maybe some pectoralis muscles because okay. that's what's pulling us forward, causing that maybe postural issue. And, and Dr. Wrench, what about acupuncture for the back? You see a lot of cases like that where you're, where you're treating the back? Oh, we do. In, in our clinic on campus, we see probably 75% of all our patients are pain patients. 
and of that group, a large majority, of course, are back, back pain patients. I might mention here, Grant, that 80% uh, of all Americans in their lifetime are going to experience some kind of low back pain, whether it's from arthritis, from, from trauma of some kind. And 80% of that number are due to a, a, an imbalance between the abdominal and spinal muscles. In okay. other words, we get a little out of shape, we don't stretch the back, we don't take care of it, and so on. But we see a great deal of that, and we have a great deal of success with it as well. Gentlemen, great discussion, and stay with us. There's more local doctors on call right after this. Ever dream of helping people? At East West College of Natural Medicine, our massage therapy program could help you achieve your dreams. Our program combines the theory and clinical application of various types of massage treatments and modalities. You could discover a path to providing pain relief, help increase mobility, and share relaxation. Let us help you realize your dream. Call 941-355-9080 today. Hi, I'm Dr. Stephen Wrench, Dean of Clinical Sciences at East West College of Natural Medicine in Sarasota. Our approach to wellness using Oriental and Western medicine is often referred to as complementary, alternative, integrative, or even holistic medicine. We like to think of it as simply medicine. Call East West College of Natural Medicine today to schedule your consultation or to learn more about our program of Oriental Medicine. Welcome back to Local Doctors on Call. We've been talking about massage therapy and oriental medicine. And gentlemen, you're back with us. And I want to get into this topic, uh, kind of both of you here. Um, are there similar ways that the body can benefit from oriental medicine, which is the acupuncture, as well as the massage therapy? Uh, whoever wants to talk about that first. Okay. Well, um, I would say they're, they're similar in one sense, uh, although our approach is a little different. Sure. Th there's an expression in healing, many paths one summit. Okay. So if we think about the wellness of the patient as kind of the top of the mountain, whether we go up that way through oriental medicine, whether we go up Ayurvedic medicine, allopathic, chiropractic, massage therapy, it doesn't really matter. It matters that really the idea for all of us is to get the patient to the top of the mountain. Sure. So this is just one way to do it. And if, if I may, I'll just go briefly into how we would do it. Please. All acupuncture physicians do really is, do, is remind the body to do what it already knows how to do and that is to repair itself. Every cell is programmed to repair itself. When we, we talk about diseases, we talk about there are, there are every, if you watch television, you see, and we hope people are watching right now, yeah. because we talk about disease and we say, oh, there's this, and then we, we tell, talk about a drug for that disease, and then we talk about the side effects of the drug. We see it every night on television sure. every day. So there really is only one disease, and that is when a cell gets too little of what it needs to thrive, or when it gets too much of what, what it cannot possibly process. Then, the, then we get inflammation all the way and we run the, the entire gamut all the way yeah. down to mutation of the cell at the, at the far end of that spectrum. What we do as acupuncture physicians and as massage therapists is gently coerce the body, remind the body, this is what homeostasis is. The this process. is how you're supposed to feel. And the miraculous part of that is we're just a conduit for that. The body knows how to do it up to a point. Right. And whether it's stress, whether it's pharmaceuticals in the body that the cell can't process. So acupuncture is another tool. It is. Whether it's a lifestyle, whether it's dietary and so on, uh, there's a point beyond which things can go too far. But as long as we get there in the interim and we can remind the body, it'll miraculously do what it knows to do in most cases. Yeah, that's a, the body's a wonderful thing. And what, what about the massage therapy fitting into this uh, collective approach? Well, one of the things that I really enjoy about working with the human body and working with other practitioners is massage therapy, along with most allied health and holistic health, is mm -hmm. that it, it's designed to be very integrative with other modalities. Okay. Massage therapy works very well with multiple other types of treatments, whether it be working directly with an acupuncture physician, a physical therapist, a chiropractor. Massage therapy is one other way that 
avenue, as Dr. Wrench said, to encourage the body to repair itself and to get back to a place where um, it can do its best at that optimal level. Absolutely. And um, are there cases where maybe someone will be on, on the massage table, will, will get a treatment, and then immediately go to the other side of the uh, facility and uh, do acupuncture, or do you like to break those up? Does it matter? I know from a massage therapy standpoint, it would always go back to the individual need of the client. Depending okay. upon the condition, it may be too much for the body to handle to do two intensive treatments okay. within the same short amount of time. However, if they're working on different aspects of the same, say, a mm -hmm. leg or a knee treatment, sure. that certainly could be do, something that a client would do if they wanted to get that double treatment. I certainly see there's a lot of benefit you, in doing something like that. You've seen that before. All right. So are there similar ways that the body, uh, I'm sorry, do massage therapists need to be licensed? We hear a lot about this. It's a good question. Do they need to be licensed in order to practice uh, here in the state of Florida? Yes, in Florida, along with about 34 other states in the country right now, there is a license requirement by the government in each state um, that does require them to be licensed. And there are some minimal standards that the licensure well, does Let's have. talk about some of those standards. First of all would be the education. Okay. Um, a school that is approved through the different state legislature, okay. um, board director, uh, most of the time it's the is Department it, of Health. Is it typically like a vocational style 18 month training or is it a degree of some kind? Or? It varies from location to location. Minimum standards are based on hours, clock okay. hours. And so oftentimes that starts out as a diploma level. Is it certificate. both classroom and uh, kind of on the job training, if Absolutely. you Absolutely. Always going to have a lot of hands-on, obviously, right. in a massage therapy program. So students are typically going to see their first hands-on training right in the first few quarters sure. of their program. And it's usually going to start, at, like I said, at a diploma level. Some schools offer degrees, um, but the certificate that they receive from a school then allows them to take a test. That examination is usually also recognized by the state and okay. then is a requirement in order to get licensed. What about acupuncture or oriental medicine? Is, is there any sort of certification or something that you need that, that adds to credibility or are there requirements in the state? Oh yes, absolutely. In fact, in, in the state of Florida, it's an acupuncture physician degree. It's a five-year program and when the uh, when the students uh, finish the program, they are considered primary care providers in the state of Florida. Okay. And acupuncture physicians in the state of Florida enjoy the, the widest range of benefits of, in terms of, of, of um, treatment. Mm -hmm. So we have the broadest scope of practice of any of the 50 states. So wow. there's a lot of, and there are, there are national board certifications that the students train and study for, and there are four phases of those. And yeah, it sounds like a pretty intense program. It, it, is, it is intense. Now, do you get residents or, or trainees at the college uh, from time to time that, that, that you guys uh, maybe take under your wing and kind of show, well, this is how it works in the real world? Do you get an opportunity to do any of that? Right now, within the massage therapy program, it's all within the actual design of the program. The okay. students are actually going to go through their course of study and become our clinical students, which will work on clients on premise. And, and I know potentially it's uh, maybe be hired uh, as faculty or as, as staff at some point. Eventually, if they have so the right credentials. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's similar I'm with sure the acupuncture as well. All, the time. all right. Um, well, what sort of things do massage therapists need to uh, do? We kind of talked about this, but license to practice. Is there, uh, do you have to have, should you get another um, education um, before you tackle this, or can you do this right out of high school? Or? Typically, once they've completed the approved course of study uh, and they complete and pass the certification exam, the licensure application process is pretty straightforward right. in the state of Florida. Fortunately, when you have a, a history in Florida that has been recognizing therapists for a number of years, mm -hmm. the licensure process is very clear. It uh, is, however, relatively stringent because you do have to pass a background check and have to complete the process of education, sure. examination, and going through the steps just to make sure that uh, you can do what you say you do under the scope of practice. So the laws are yeah. very clear and so is the process. Outstanding. Uh, any, anything else when it comes to the education? Uh, and you, you guys have, are veterans at this, but um, do you have to go back for certification every now and again? Or are there uh, clinics or seminars that, that you attend around the country just to, I guess, keep up your skills, if you will, or learn if there's anything new happening out there or new trends? 
Well, like in, in any profession, we have CEUs and continu continuing education that okay. we have to do, and there are so many hours required every two years. So in, in theory, you are constantly renewing your license always. You have to right. do that or you lose your license. So your, your license would literally expire out from under you. So we are all constantly doing that. You're, it's a constantly a re-education so process. You're constantly hitting and, that yeah, checklist. That's I've required by law. You I've have to do that. that. And what about you? It's a very big part and a requirement of the licensure process as well. We're always looking for ways to expand our abilities to not only stay current on laws and techniques, but also to expand our abilities as practitioners. Are, are there any new uh, things that have, that have come out that uh, you know, people are reading about or asking you about when, when they come? Uh, to the college? Uh, well, I think healing is, is ever evolving. And as soon as we st stop and we go, we've got it all down pat, I think we're selling ourselves and, and the public very, very short. Right. So uh, education ends when life ends, if even then. And so we are, we are constantly uh, improving what we do. Thousands of years ago, an acupuncture was just needles and, and some massage and herbs and so on. Today, it, it involves uh, elaborate laboratory testing. We use laser therapy. We use injection therapy. Wow. We use imaging, and and, and it goes it goes way beyond. So, like everything, it is certainly uh, it is evolved, if you will, yeah. even and with technology. You you hear today when we talk about how things integrate. You talk about integrative medicine. We hear holistic medicine. We hear complementary medicine, and so on. We like to just call what we do intelligent medicine. Ah, okay. I, I like that. All right. Um, we are going to have much more coming up, and we'll be back with more local doctors on call right after this. Hi, I'm Dr. Stephen Wrench, Dean of Clinical Sciences at East West College of Natural Medicine in Sarasota. Our approach to wellness using Oriental and Western medicine is often referred to as complementary, alternative, integrative, or even holistic medicine. We like to think of it as simply medicine. Call East West College of Natural Medicine today to schedule your consultation or to learn more about our program of Oriental medicine. Ever dream of helping people? At East West College of Natural Medicine, our massage therapy program could help you achieve your dreams. Our program combines the theory and clinical application of various types of massage treatments and modalities. You could discover a path to providing pain relief, help increase mobility, and share relaxation. Let us help you realize your dream. Call 941-355-9080 today. This is Local Doctors on Call. We've been talking about massage therapy and other related topics. Dr. Wrench and Kevin Pierce are with us. Kevin, Dr. Wrench, uh, great having you here during uh, this edition. And I want to go a little bit more into detail about um, the benefits of acupuncture and massage therapy. And I know there are many. Um, either one of you want to start to tackle that question. Sure. Well, I think, first of all, the general misconception is uh, that both of these modalities and perhaps other modalities are used in the, the, tr the Western sense. We think about, I'm sick, it's time to go to the doctor. Right. I have pain. I hurt. I, yeah, I need to get, get this looked at. But uh, we understand that these are symptoms that, and what we, we kind of are reared in this country in thinking that the, my health care is in the hands of my medical professional. It's right. not in my hands, but we're really moving away from that paradigm, yeah. and it's really a time the, that it happens. There are so many people out there, even in, in general medicine, that just don't want to go to the doctor. And I don't know if you, yeah. if you experience that in, in we, what you're doing. We do, and uh, we have a couple of thoughts on that. Number one, first of all, if we think about oriental medicine, and it's, it's changed so much today, but it is the oldest healing modality that we know of on the planet. And in, in China, for example, traditionally people go to their physician mm -hmm. uh, as just a normal course of the week. They go for preventative reasons. And the same thing I think is true with massage, but here we wait oftentimes until the symptoms are rampant and then right. we go to the doctor oftentimes to get worse news. So we find out that people are changing uh, their mentality a great deal and that's what we talked about intelligent medicine is that you have to, you have to take responsibility for your health care. Yeah. So what we get a lot in our clinic is 
Well, I've tried everybody else. And, and it hasn't helped, so mm. I figured I'd try you guys. And we go, great, there's no pressure on us now. <laughs> but uh, we're, happy, we're happy to ha have that opportunity to help, though. So. And, Kevin, we hear that, that folks maybe have a headache or they have some other symptom, but are there other issues that, that cause them to come and see you guys? Any other things that they're experiencing where they want to say, hey, um, I want to give uh, your approach a try, massage therapy Absolutely. Or acupuncture? Absolutely. I think one of the big things that Dr. Wrench was touching on kind of addresses that is that mm -hmm. part of therapy is also educating people on the benefits okay. and if they see how their lifestyle can be impacting their quality of life right and then you have a competent therapist that can actually address those needs you're going to be able to treat numerous aspects of that person's day-to-day -day sure. sort of if you want to call it your patterns and that's a big address that we do in massages you look at the muscle behavior you look at patterns you look at how somebody is walking or sitting or their right. posture or just their pain patterns in general and those often are going to be related to a multiple you know number of things not just a headache whereas that's the end result oftentimes headaches begin in the low back sometimes right. even in the feet or legs and so understanding how that dynamic can interact allows the therapist to really approach it from a broad perspective. But what about this scenario where you have someone who maybe experienced a traffic uh, crash and maybe jammed a knee and had to have surgery, but they're feeling chronic pain there um, even after all this, uh, these surgeries and, and this therapy. Um, do you pot potentially uh, see a way to, to be able to help them and relieve that pain? Absolutely. Within massage therapy, you address the particular area, like I mentioned before, and mm -hmm. also the surrounding areas. If they have a pre-existing condition, right. such as an accident or an injury, you always have to take into consideration tissue damage, right. scar tissue, uh, postural you know, compensation, which could mean that the body is developing new patterns. That actually, sometimes right. the side that wasn't hurt is more painful than the side that was yeah, injured. Wow. So addressing an area that has a particular need is always going to be something we want to focus on using different types of hydrotherapy, maybe some range of motion, flexibility, and then you can use some alternate methods that aren't just direct pressure. Right. You can also do stretching. You can also do uh, self-care, such as at home, using what we call rice packs. Or so you give, packs. you give folks homework from time to Absolutely. time. Absolutely. That's good stuff. Now for acupuncture, same thing. Uh, someone has a chronic knee pain, uh, you, can, you can help treat that with uh, acupuncture. Maybe oh, not even there, yeah. but maybe just the whole leg. Well, I think one of the general misconceptions is about acupuncture and possibly massage therapy as well is that they always say, well, you know, number one, that's, uh, massage therapy is a luxury. Geez, I wish I could get I that all I the time. But it really is preventative. And so we look at that as it, it's, uh, if I get acupuncture, I'm only going to get it for pain. We, we treat, when people ask us frequently, what, what can you treat with acupuncture? And we really say, what can't we treat? Yeah. So we can treat uh, really anything and everything uh, given time. Certainly if anything goes too long, then no medicine is, is right. going to suffice. And that is going to do it for this edition of Local Doctors on Call. We'll see you next time.